So chapter one, um, sources of law. So we have a couple of different sources of law that we actually use in our legal system here in Canada. So the first one we're going to talk about is the common law. So the common law, these are the oldest laws that we have. These are the laws that we brought with us um, when we emigrated here and we started to colonize here in Canada. So these are the laws that we brought from England and they are, when I say they're old, I mean they're really, really old, okay? We're talking hundreds of years old. So the common law is based on the doctrine of stare decisis. So if you haven't studied this UBC stuff very much yet, you will know and you will finally figure out that they love their Latin terms. They love their Latin, they love their legal terms, they love that specific language. So you kind of got to get used to learning this stuff and knowing definitions. So the doctrine of stare decisis means let the former decision stand. Now what that, what that actually means for this common law is that when a judge is hearing a case in a court, and he's deciding how, what, what kind of a decision he's going to make, they will actually use past precedent cases, cases that have been heard in that court system previously in order to base their decision upon. So the past precedent cases, because you're constantly using the same precedent, you're using the same types of decisions and the same types of logic over and over and over, it creates a uniformity with this source of law. So the common law is quite predictable in, in the outcome that we're going to get um, at the end of everything. The problem is, though, is that uniformity makes it a, a somewhat rigid. So there's not a lot of flexibility in the common law to, to make it uh, the best outcome for everybody that's involved in the situations that come up, okay? So precedent is the earlier cases. Now, these are strict laws. Um, there's only one remedy for common law, and that is damages. Do you guys know what they're talking about when they say damages? What is that remedy about? Monitor. It's cash, right? The damages they mean is cash. It's not that you get to beat up the other guy who did something wrong to you. It's that the award is going to be damages, and that is going to be a cash, uh, a cash payment or a cash award. Okay, <coughs> that is another reason. So this one remedy here is another reason why it it makes the common law so rigid because there's only one choice. The judge that's making a decision, that's trying to put forward a judgment, they don't have a choice but to award damages as a remedy because that's the only one on the table, okay? So this one, um, it, it sounds like it might be straightforward and it sounds like it might be a good, a good thing to follow, but actually people think when they get into these situations, when they go to court and they're the ones that are trying to get compensated for something, a lot of times people don't actually want damages. They actually want a different kind of remedy. We'll talk about that in a few minutes when we look at the other source, okay? Does that make sense to everybody so far? Okay. Again, it's pretty straightforward stuff. So, uh, you guys like that picture? Mm -hmm. I love that picture. Okay, so uh, I need to have a couple of volunteers, good, two good sports in the room. Who's willing? Okay, what's your name? Sanjeev. Sanjeev, can I can I pick on you too? Just because you're he's right bes beside you. Yeah. What's your name? Armin. Armin. Arvind. Armin. Armin. Okay, so Sanjeev and Armin. Okay, so um, who wants to be the bad guy? Okay. Want to be the bad guy? Am I saying that right, Armin? Or is it Armin? Armin. H A R M. H A R. Okay, Armin. Okay, so you're gonna be the bad guy. Okay, so you guys are neighbors. And um, uh, Sanjeev, you have goats, okay? And you love these goats. They're, they're, they're your prize goats, they're your pets, they're your family, and you, uh, you protect them with your life. Now, your neighbor here is very, very jealous of your goats, okay? He's hiding that from you. You think you guys have a great relationship, but secretly he doesn't like you. And so he schemes to come and steal your goats. So he steals some goats from you. Now, are you going to be happy about him stealing some of your pets? You consider them to be your family. No. No. So what is your first response to that? What are you going to do? Pick anything. I'm going to talk to him. You can talk to him about it. Okay, so you go and talk to your neighbor. 
And what what do you think about him talking to you? Are you going to give up those votes? Are you going to admit to what you did? Yeah. Exactly. So he wanted, he's been coveting those goats for a long, long time. He's not giving them back. He, in fact, he's not even going to admit that he did this thing, this bad thing to his neighbor in the first place. So are you happy with that? No. no. So what does he do? He's going to actually take his neighbor to court. Okay. So they get to a court, right? Now, if the judge were to hear this goat stealing case, and he, he's, he's now going to make his decision based on common law past precedent, what is the only remedy that that judge can give for compensation for the goats being stolen? Cash. Money. So, Sanjeev, if the, the judge says that, that Armin has to pay you $10,000 for your goats, does that make you happy? Yeah. Why not? Well, I, I'm comparing it with my dog. Like, I love my dog. He loves his goats. He absolutely loves his goats. They're his family. So you just want your goats back. You say, that's okay. He can keep the $10,000. I just want him to give me my goats back. That's the remedy he wants. So under the common law, think of this. If this were the only possibility, if this were the only source of law, would that be very fair in most of the cases that people had disputes and conflict? wouldn't be very fair and so that's what the people cried right people were saying this isn't fair I don't like this now remember we brought these laws from England right and so they originated and they were first in England and they first had these problems back in England and so when people were unsatisfied with the result that they had in a court in a case just like this for example they said oh I'm not happy with that resolution so guess what they did what do people do when they're not happy? Oh, they might steal it back. He doesn't. He's not. He's he's a good he's good. He's good. Yeah, he's a good guy. Sanjeev's a good guy. So he's gonna complain, right? And who would they go and complain to? The king. The king, exactly. So the people went and uh, petitioned the king, complained to the king. Now, do you think the king wants to have a string of people waiting to see him every single day, talking about my neighbor stole my goat? Does that does that seem like a good use of his time? Probably not, right? So in order to sort of relieve that and to give a little bit more flexibility and a little bit more options, the king decided to create this equitable law source as well as having that common law source there too, okay? So the, the remedies under equitable law are not about the money. They're, it's not about the cash. It's about trying to make the situation as right as possible, okay? So it's about fairness of judgment, the conflict resolution between the two people, and it's usually about somebody uh, being made to do something or to maybe not do something, depending on what it is that we're talking about, okay? So it's, it's, you have to remember the remedies are not about the money, it's about trying to make the situation as fair as, as possible. So under this equitable law, we have three different remedies. We have specific performance, injunction, and another wonderful Latin phrase, quantum meruit. So quantum meruit means as much as you deserve. So you've got three boxes on your first page. The middle one is titled equitable law, and you see the quantum meruit is right at the bottom. I'd like you to write in this definition, as much as you deserve, down at the bottom there. I find that when you write things down, it makes you remember them a little bit easier. Okay, so as much as you deserve. So there's three remedies under this equitable law. You can see already that that would create a little bit more flexibility if the judge were to use a past precedent case or, or a few of them under this equitable law source instead of going to that common law. Okay, so we'll talk about what each one of these <coughs> is. Specific performance is when you're made to do just that. You're made to specifically perform something Usually if there's a, a, a contract uh, dispute between two people, it means that the one person would have to fulfill their promise if they're, not, if they're refusing to do so. In this case, what would the specific performance be? Give the goats back. So the judge would say, you have to give him his goats back. There could be an injunction as well uh, on top of that specific performance, so it usually stops you from doing something. There are all different types of injunctions. The one that we know and love is the restraining order. So if you've had 
a stalker crazy person after you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've had to go to the police and say, I don't want them anywhere near me. So a restraining order, they could say, I mean, you can't go near Sanjeev's goats. You're not allowed to go anywhere near them anymore. Quantum Meroit is the confusing one, so that's the one that means as much as you deserve. For this one, remember, it's it, the remedies under this equitable law are not about cash. Okay, It's not about one person giving another person cash. It's about them trying to fix the situation as best that it can be fixed. So in this case, if these two guys had tried to resolve their conflict, and let's say three goats were stolen instead of just one, if Armin had given two goats back to Sanjeev, would that be satisfactory to you if you only got two out of the three back? No. How many goats do you want back? All three. All three. So in this case, you've tried. You've tried to work it out between you two. So if you still go to court, in that case, the judge would say, you know what, that's not as much as you deserve. He's guilty of stealing all three goats, so he's, he's going to give you the last goat back as well. Okay? So you can have all different types of ways that this might happen. That's just one example. Does that make sense? Okay. So you could have, um, he could have graffitied your barn and driven over your mailbox as well while he was trying to make a fast getaway. He accidentally ran over your mailbox and he just graffitied the barn to be a jerk. Okay. So the judge might say you need to fix that as well. You need to repaint the barn and you need to fix the mailbox. Now, in order for you to do that, what would you have to do? You'd have to spend money. Now, are you going to pay him the cash so he can fix it? Not with this one. You're being made to go and fix that situation. So you might have to spend money in order to, to carry this out, but it's not about you giving money to the other person. Does that make sense? It can be kind of confusing because you're saying, wait a minute, I don't get what, what the difference is between damages and quantum merit. That's the, the difference. Damages is one person pays a cash award basically to the other person. This one, it gets creative in order to fix the situation. Make sense? Okay. Can it be both? Can it be both? That's a good question. So if a judge were to make a decision, and that we have this goat stealing case that were happening, okay? If the judge were to say, well, I'm going to award damages, what is that based on? What past precedent? Common law. So can he kind of pick and choose? Do you think he can take a couple of cases from the common law and mix her up with a couple of cases from the equitable law? No, you can't. You actually have to choose one or the other source. You can't have your feet kind of in both camps. Now, I know that real life is a lot more complicated than what you're learning here in class because real life is always more complicated. For the purposes of the exam, you guys need to realize they have to keep it simple and clear enough so that you'll be able to answer the questions because otherwise you would need to be a lawyer in order to answer all of these law questions. Okay? So for the purposes of the exam, for you guys when you're answering a question, the judge can't award a damages remedy and then also order a specific performance at the same time. They're either going to use one source or the other, so it's either the damages or that other list of three. So when you're talking about stalker, you couldn't give someone money and a pushing order, I guess? So usually the usually you're not made to, to, to pay damages if you're stalking somebody. It would be the restraining order that you, you care that. about. But in this case for the for the goats the judge wouldn't be able to say, you've got to give all three goats back and you have to pay him $10,000. Does that seem fair? Even though I know he broke the law, does that seem fair or does that seem like he's getting like extra punished? Right? If he gives the goats back, he's rectified the situation. Should he be made to pay? By, by the way that we interpret the law, no. If he's being made to pay the money, then should he be allowed to keep the goats? 
right? So you, you can't kind of have your cake and eat it too just because somebody wronged you in some way. And in a lot of cases, like you did it deliberately in this story, okay? You're a bad guy, right? But in some cases, people will do things to wrong you and it's not necessarily that they intended that to happen. And so in, especially in those situations, you wouldn't want to have somebody trying to, to get double compensated for it, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. What? So I'm, I, I am, what if I do a job that fundamentally I, you agreed to pay me for, but you haven't, you haven't paid me. So I did a job and you haven't financially paid me because that was the agreement. So if, for me to get what I justly deserve. That would be the money. Okay, that yeah. would be the money. But then all of a sudden that wouldn't be quantum maru, maroot or whatever, because it's cash. <coughs> is that is that considered, oh, that's a common law? Under a common that would law? be damages. Yeah, that would be under common law. Okay, so and, it, and if and in this case, if you suffered and you had to pay interest because I, I yeah. hadn't paid you, yeah. then they might award extra right. more over and above right. the but contract. But common law. It's, it still would be damages, yeah. So it depends. It de yeah. So in each law case, each mm -hmm. case under yeah. it, like that's yeah. reviewed yeah. in the court would be very, very unique. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to look yeah. at each circumstance. But for that one, it would probably just be under contract law, mm -hmm. in fact. Okay. So it would be a pretty straightforward okay. one. It's when you've got people, you know, when it's multifaceted okay. and there's maybe both directions, that's when it gets a little bit more right. complicated. Yeah, which is the reason why I say real life is a lot more complicated than what you guys are doing for your book learning, okay? Um, statute law is, this is really the only time we're going to mention it uh, for the most part in this chapter. We're going to talk about it in little bits and pieces in the other chapters. Um, statute law is created through legislation. For you guys, if they're kind of asking you which law or which one is, is legislation, most of the time the answer is the Land Title Act because that's the one that applies to you guys. Um, the purpose of statute law is to alter, affect, or change the common law. Why would we want to make changes or affect the common law? What did we say about the common law? Rigid. It's rigid, it's old, right? And so if you wanted to have a, a court case and it were about social media and your privacy and, the, and whether your, your employer could look at your social media accounts, do you think that would be covered under the common law? Pretty old, right? So nothing sort of new and nothing modern is gonna be covered in there. The common law doesn't do a very good job of protecting people in a lot of cases because our lives are way more complicated and there's there's a lot of stuff that isn't covered in that common law um, source. So we have to have things like the equitable law and we have to have the statute law to create new pieces of legislation to cover off all of the stuff that sort of crops up as the decades and the centuries go by. Um, statute law, you don't have to worry about the remedies. They don't ask you that. Statute law is very complicated because there's so much that is included in that. It's, it's very complicated. So they won't ask you what remedies there are for statute law. Yeah. Okay, so um, there are three levels of government that we have, federal, provincial, municipal. We'll be talking about those a little bit more in Chapter 18 for the real estate people. If you were asked in a question, which of these levels of government can make changes to the common law? So what they're asking there is which ones can pass legislation? Which ones can put forward statute laws? What would you guys say? <coughs> Federal and provincial, so, what, so not municipal? No, they can't. So municipal passes your bylaws, right, your local laws. The federal and provincial are the two, they're the ones that have clout, right? They're the ones that will pass the statute laws, and the municipal is just the slave of the provincial and the federal governments, okay? So you can have, you can have acts, statute laws, that are federal, which means it uh, applies to the entire country, or you can have provincial acts that only apply to this province. So the Real Estate Services Act is a good, is a good example of a provincial piece of legislation. It is a statute law, but it is only um, applies to this province and not to the entire country. Okay? Good? If you were asked this question, which is the most weighty type of law out of these three? So which one has the most influence? 
which is which is the one the source that the judge is going to go to first if they have options for past precedent cases in all of these yeah why do you say statute it's the newest and the most relevant and the most broad and the most diverse and it covers the the modern day issues that we have right what would be after that one so statutes first what's number two Equitable, because again, it's a little bit new, right? The common law is the old geezer. It's the one that comes in last place. Um, statute, it's the newest. It covers everything. Equitable, there's still, it's older still, but it, it has a bunch of flexibility in there. And the common law is the one that they'll go to last. If they have no other choice, then they'll go to that source if they have to. So we already talked about this. Can you ask for a damages and a specific performance at the same time? We already said no, you can't. It's one or the other. You're either making the decision under common law and that's what the judge is going to award as a remedy for damages or you're going to get those remedies under equitable law, but they're two different things. Okay, so which of the following statements is not true? So in a conflict between common law principles and equitable principles, equitable principles will prevail. That's true. So again, this is kind of another way to say which is the more weighty, which is the one that the judge would prefer to, to use. And equitable will win out over common law. So what about this one? Will statute win out over common law for number two? Yeah, we said statute law is number one. What about number three? Will equitable beat out the statute law? No. So that is our false statement. And then we have here that statute law is going to be number one and it's going to win. So when you're doing your questions, make sure that you're looking through and you're reasoning through all of the answer choices because a lot of times they'll pull info from other chapters and it's a good way to review and to see what you know. Precedents form a major part of the common law system. Another major source of our law is legislation. Which of the following could be called legislation? Land Title Act. What are they referring to when they're saying legislation? Statute law, exactly. So you, you're looking for that, uh, that Land Title Act. Now, what word in this piece of law here tells you it's a statute law? Yeah. Act. So the Land Title Act, almost every single time when you see that word act, it tells you that it's a piece of statute law, okay? So it's a little hint there. None of the other ones have that. Princip uh, principle of specific performance, what is that? Is that a piece of legislation? What is that? As a remedy, right? And the equity of redemption is actually um, pulling a piece of uh, info from your chapter 15, your mortgage law chapter, which you guys